At the Conservative MP and Chair of the Women and Equalities Committee, Caroline Noakes joins us now. Morning. Good to see you this morning. Um, I mean, the, the, the headline figure in this report, that black women are four times more likely to die in these circumstances than white women, is, is, is bad enough. Just, just take us through the findings of the report before we move on to the, the, the conclusions. Well, it's very stark that mm. a black mother is 3.7 times more likely to die than a white one, an Asian mother 1.8 times, um, and that in itself is horrendous. Mm. We know that maternity services in this country, by and large, are safe and that you're unlikely to die, but this disparity is really stark and really long-standing. We've known about it for 20 years. Yeah. So the committee's calling upon the government to actually focus in on this, take action. Don't assume because maternity services are safe that they're safe for everyone. There is a difference. Tackle it. Do, do we understand what, what the root cause of this disparity is? Because, uh, speaking to Atanuki a, a little bit earlier on, I mean, yeah, clearly she said racism is a part of this, but it is not everything, of course. No, and it's very complex, and it would be fair to say if you were to talk to Professor Marion Knight, she would always make the point this is a really complicated, mm. multifaceted problem. But it's about structural inequalities, it's about poor housing, it's about poor education. It's about the way women are being treated when they arrive in the labour ward, mm. the way that they are being ignored, that their concerns are being disregarded. And if you talk to five times more, and I know you have, they will always make the point that they felt that the women who they survey felt ignored. They felt that when they said something is going wrong with my body, that it was just dismissed and they were told, you know, go home, you're fine. You're not in labour yet. Mm. And I think that's what really concerns me, is that we must make sure that women are treated in a culturally appropriate way, that we recognise that there is this disparity. And so start taking the steps around training, around making sure that there's enough funding for continuity of carer, mm -hmm. and recognising that the people living in the most deprived communities are most likely to have the worst outcomes in maternity. Does, does this research suggest that there needs to be an attitudinal shift amongst at least some staff working in maternity units? Look, I think it very clearly highlights that, that there is an attitudinal problem in some instances, and I'm not saying that everybody in the NHS is racist, far from it, but I'm saying, look, the Department of Health, the Royal College of Obs and Gynae, the National Midwifery Council need to all come together and focus in on this is a specific problem. How can we make sure that any hint of racism is drummed out of our NHS and that it's a service that is equal for everybody and will treat everybody's concerns equally? Yeah, I mean, Atanuki was describing her own personal experience and, and ideas such as, you know, that, that black women are somehow able to, to more cope with pain, that black women are somehow, you know, louder or more boisterous and need to be put in their place. I mean, it, it strikes me that if you have people who genuinely believe things like that, working maternity wards, that there's not an awful lot you can do to and shift the attitudes of someone like that. And that was the evidence that Five Times yeah. More gave to the committee, and it was really compelling and heartbreaking to hear the stories of women who had been told exactly that, you don't feel pain the same way. Of course they feel pain the same way. Of course they need to be listened to and supported. And this is why our NHS needs to have culturally competent training. It's why we need to have mm -hmm. diversity and inclusion uh, members of staff working in the NHS. So women like Chloe and Tineke of five times more are listened to and that acted upon their concerns to make sure that this doesn't keep happening. We can't be back here in 20 years saying, oh, well, you know, it's shifted a tiny bit. We need it to be parity. And, and, and as we were discussing just in the break there, sometimes the, the experiences that women have in maternity wards when they are not uniformly positive, that, that, that does happen with white women as well, as well as with black women too. It really does. And poor experiences in maternity can live with women for the rest of their lives mm. and it will impact the number of children that they go on to have. And so although we know giving birth in this country is safe, we know that we have a phenomenally low levels of maternal morbidity. The stark reality is, is that we have to address the disparity and we have to make sure that we do better. What, what noises are you hearing from inside DOH, inside from inside government, that, that they are taking this problem seriously? As you say, I mean, we have known about this for an awfully long time. So there's a real problem with data collection. And Maria Caulfield, when she came in front of the committee the tail end of last year, was really candid and really constructive with us and made the point that we need to do better about understanding which interventions work. Now, look, there's a massive delay around collection of data and mm. uh, the confidential inquiry that looks at all maternal deaths. Sometimes there'll be a 500-day delay between a death happening and them getting the information, which makes it really hard mm -hmm. to assess it accurately and understand what the root causes 
were. So I want the DHSC to, to focus in on that and work out how all the bodies like the Office for National Statistics can work better to get data quicker. I think that matters. But it's also about using the Maternity Disparities Task Force, which was set up last year, hasn't met for a while, is scheduled to meet again very imminently, and using that as a way to bring in new strategy and really drive change. I, I think it's probably worth our while, Ms Noakes, just if we reiterate a point that you have made several times, because there may well be people who are pregnant, who are about to head into a maternity ward right now, who are watching this and, and feeling worried. In general, we do pretty well in terms of maternity in this country, don't we? Yeah, we do. We do. We have a very low rate of maternal morbidity, low rate of stillbirths. What we're focusing on is, is the disparity mm. here. And so my message to women is you are safe, but also, it's really important that going into this experience that women feel confident enough to use their own voices and to use their partners for support and make sure that when they feel things are going wrong, that they're not afraid to speak out. Exactly that. Caroline Noakes, good to see you this morning. Thanks for being with us.